Well, thanks for joining us today. This is Dale Ekbaum. I'm going to talk about uh, CO2 laser medial arytenoidectomies for our patients that have bilateral true vocal fold paralysis. So this is a procedure that's done on both true vocal folds, specifically for a patient that has a bilateral true vocal fold paralysis that is not trach dependent, uh, but does want to have a little more ability to run or walk at a faster pace uh, or do the elliptical more and yet not have much change to the voice. So this is kind of an in-between surgery. It doesn't, uh, it's not as extensive as a chordotomy or a, a partial or, or, or complete arytenoidectomy or even a suture lateralization. Here we'll take a look at the uh, preoperative video stroboscopy uh, on a patient that decided to have this procedure. So this is a patient that is struggling with the breathing, not at rest, and, and even not with a, a, a slow or moderate walk, but um, she really struggles when she pushes herself. You can see the Bernoulli effect of, of the cords when she breathes in deeply. There's a laxity of the true vocal folds in these patients, on some of them especially when they're older. This procedure is, is a good option uh, to work posteriorly on the uh, arytenoids bilaterally, and this actually helps to tighten up the vocal cords. Here we're looking at uh, starting on the left true vocal fold and, and a CO2 laser excision of the, of the vocal process of the arytenoid. I basically uh, uh, saucerize this arytenoid all the way to the tip of the vocal process and uh, typically on, on a little past that even. We'll see how we'll do that more on the left side in a minute. Uh, and then I go and do the same thing on the right where we're just uh, again setting the uh, CO2 laser on whatever wattage you need, often two, two watts, uh, continue a super pulse, and then uh, move forward with um, with uh, excising out the uh, the vocal process on that side. You don't have to take a lot of tissue here to allow for that tightening effect that like I mentioned, but you want to take enough. You have to remember that the voice will diminish somewhat and most of these patients don't want much of a voice change. Here I have a Hunsacker jet tube in place as well, which is laser safe so we're jetting this airway. This is a patient that does not have a trach. And I decided to extend it a little bit more on one side, be a little more aggressive on one side compared to the other. I want to make sure I, I keep good vibratory wave at least on one side, but also to, to have enough of an effect, I wanted to push the envelope a little bit on the left. So you, you see me here extending it a bit more posteriorly a little more anteriorly, rolling the tissue over, able to ablate more posteriorly there. I extended it a little bit posterior on the, on the right as well here. One of the risks is granuloma formation, so that's something to consider when doing this. You have to tell a patient that typically we don't have to trach with this, but they're, they're, they are at risk of, of needing a trach. I usually don't inject steroid at the time, but I sometimes will prescribe an inhaled steroid postoperatively. Again, wanting to be sure I'm rotating the larynx now with my hand on the neck, and, and this allows for us to ablate more in the mid portion of the uh, wound and along that inferior edge. Again, pushing side to side, thinning each side, extending it a little bit more anteriorly. Not much onto the cord, you gotta be careful. And this is our 70 degree scope. It's not a lot of tissue that's been excised, but you have gotten into the uh, vocal process on each side and then uh, this is kind of our final uh, picture, final look at it. Again, the Hunsacker tube allowing for nice subglottic jet ventilation below. 
the glottis as well. <laughs> this is postoperatively. You can hear the voice is still not perfect, but uh, she has more of an opening, especially on that left side that I was a little more aggressive on. But uh, often there is a little decrease in mucosa wave on that side, so that's that's where you need to be careful that you don't extend it too far. But uh, she had an overall good result. She was very happy with it, even though it looks like there's not a lot that has changed. But I think that tightening effect really helps. So some key points uh, regarding this procedure. Remember to talk to patients that a trach may be necessary but is unlikely postoperatively. You just remove and saucerize the left and right uh, vocal process and extend it a little bit anterior and a little posterior. You expect to have some tightening of the cord and to help with the laxity that you see, especially in a patient that has a certain uh, level of, of bowing of the cords. Also, subglottic jet ventilation is, is a nice approach uh, to have the tube out of the way. You can also use a very small, like 5 or even 4 endotracheal tube and still get this job done. But it's, uh, it's very nice and easy to do with a Hunsacker jet ventilation tube, as, as we use in this case. Thanks for joining us.